I have a theory that hasn't actually been proven yet in the science, but I have a theory that when you are on TRT, you get significant cellular damage in the brain. Hey guys, Fitness Science here, and today's video is going to be on enclomiphene, particularly whether this drug can be used as an alternative to testosterone replacement therapy. You ain't been doing the education. You don't realize I'm so frustrated. You ain't got the answer. You ain't got the answer. You see, for the guys who don't want to use TRT, enclomiphene may actually work to boost testosterone levels. The thing with TRT is you get a complete shutdown of the entire HPT axis. Both LH and FSH signaling from the pituitary and the hypothalamus is turned off completely when you're on TRT. And by the time you're about two to three weeks in, you have basically no endogenous production of testosterone left. It's pretty much all the exogenous injectable testosterone. And this is why on TRT, you virtually have non-existent levels of LH and FSH because the brain has turned off signaling completely. But the thing is, is there are guys who start TRT where the pituitary is actually intact. And this is where the two types of hypogonadism come in. You can either have primary or secondary. Now, primary hypogonadism is where there's an issue at the testicle level itself. So the testicles are not responding to any gonadotropins, LH or FSH at all. So no matter how much signaling there is, the testicles will never respond. And for this type of primary hypogonadism, enclomiphene will never work because the testicles will just never respond. And really the only option here is testosterone replacement therapy. Secondary hypogonadism is where the testicles are working and the pituitary gland or the hypothalamus is not sending out the adequate signaling to get the testicles to make testosterone. Basically, there's an issue at the brain level. And instead of just jumping on TRT, enclomiphene may be an option for these kind of guys to increase signaling levels of FSH and LH and see if the testicles respond by outputting more testosterone. Basically, enclomiphene gives you an option to preserve the HPT axis whilst also getting an increase in both free and total testosterone. So how does enclomiphene work? Well, it works by quite a clever mechanism. So basically in a perfectly functioning HPT axis, the body needs some way of regulating how much testosterone is produced because otherwise we would just pump out testosterone and have no negative feedback to turn off production. The body gets this feedback from testosterone itself, but also estrogen. So when estrogen levels get too high, the body knows it has created too much testosterone, which has then been aromatized to estrogen. Therefore, it will pull back on FSH and LH to decrease testosterone. But this is the smart way that enclomiphene works. It antagonizes the estrogen receptors in the brain, basically binding into the receptor and stopping estrogen exerting its usual negative effect. So the body loses the ability to know how much testosterone it's produced, thinking it's too low, and therefore tricks the brain into producing more LH and FSH therefore creating more testosterone when that reaches the testicles. It's basically a trick. We're tricking the brain into thinking testosterone is low, so we're telling the brain produce more and more. And studies are pretty interesting on clomiphene. Now, just a quick note, enclomiphene is just one isomer, which is pure antagonism of the estrogen receptor. Clomiphene is two isomers, one antagonistic and one agonistic on the estrogen receptor. But yeah, the results are pretty promising. This study showed that testosterone increased just as much on clomiphene versus TRT, but clomiphene had no HPT axis shutdown or suppression. And the big benefit I feel for not suppressing the HPT axis is that you get all the downstream hormones still being produced from the cholesterol precursor. When you take TRT, the, there is no signaling to turn cholesterol into testosterone at all. And cholesterol doesn't just immediately go to testosterone. There's a number of key hormones throughout the pathway that are produced some such as pregnenolone and DHEA, are quite valuable in terms of brain chemistry, brain functioning, cognitive abilities, and this is why these hormones are often called neurosteroids. When you shut down the HPT axis completely, you lose the body's ability to create these neurosteroids in as much quantity as if the HPT axis was just functioning normally. Often guys on TRT will struggle with low pregnenolone or DHEA levels, but with clomiphene and enclomiphene, you basically get an intact HPT axis just ramped up. So enclomiphene is like stepping on the accelerator using the pre-existing engine you have versus TRT, which is a bit of a blunt tool in that you're taking the entire engine out, putting a new one in, and it's an exogenous testosterone 
with no endogenous production of these vital neurosteroids at all. Now in practice, it all sounds good, but time and time again on comments on my channel, on the forums, um, I see people saying, look, I haven't had good results with Clomid or Enclomiphene at all. What are the downsides? Because if you could just boost testosterone like this, why isn't everyone on it? This would be the world's greatest testosterone booster ever. But there are some issues. The big one is people struggle with E2 or estrogen levels on enclomiphene and clomiphene because it's boosting FSH and LH up so much, you're producing a lot more testosterone than you would naturally. That testosterone, if it's not used for androgen receptor transcription and protein accumulation, is actually then going to be turned into estrogen. Because the aromatase enzyme is still intact, often guys struggle with very high levels of E2 on Clomid because they're basically ramping up testosterone, but E2 comes along with that. However, there are studies to show there's a ceiling effect, as in estrogen is not going to continue to rise forever. There's a ceiling as to how much estrogen will eventually basically flatline and you won't get a continual accumulation of E2 in the body. But for guys who already have quite high body fat levels where the aromatase enzyme is already quite prevalent, this may be a concern when taking Clomid and it may be a good idea uh, to use a very, very low dose AI if E2 gets uncontrollable and you want to go for clomiphene monotherapy. A good way to do this would be when you get your blood back, look at the T to E2 ratio and make sure that's similar to what you were naturally and optimize T to be a lot higher than your E2. The other big negative is that clomiphene seems to reduce insulin-like growth factor one, which is an insulin-like growth factor. And reducing that isn't great, especially for bodybuilders and powerlifters because it is quite anabolic and directly stimulates mTOR. But the best benefit of enclomiphene is that you don't shut down the HPT axis. You see, the thing is, I see time and time again, guys on forums saying basically the same thing. I can't manage my sides on TRT and I want to come off. And this may be a month in or it may be 10 years on TRT and you wanna come off. And often this is because they haven't dialed in their dose and if they actually had some proper blood work and dialed in their dose, they could get rid of those sides. But the other reason a lot of these guys wanna come off is because they didn't actually need TRT in the first place. As in their testicles were functioning completely well. The, their lytic cells, and their testicular function was intact. It's just the signaling from the brain wasn't as strong as it was to stimulate testosterone production. Maybe this lack of signaling was due to lifestyle factors like diet, a lack of sleep, overtraining, stress, chronic stress, chronic fatigue, whatever it may be. But some of these guys on TRT for years and years actually had the anatomical infrastructure to create testosterone. It's just they jumped the gun went for TRT and if they want to come off, the issue is it can take so long to repair the HPT axis. I have a theory that hasn't actually been proven yet in the science, but I have a theory that when you are on TRT, you get significant cellular damage in the brain over the course of many, many years. Say you're on TRT for 10 years. I have a theory that GNRH neurons, which is the very first part of the whole HPT axis, those neurons are actually destroyed when you are on TRT for many, many years. And this is why so many guys can come off TRT, go on a PCT, have perfectly fine levels on paper, and when they withdraw that PCT, their levels completely plummet back to, you know, 100 nanograms per deciliter or something. And my theory is that the functioning at the testicles is preserved to a certain degree, but it's actually issues with the GnRH neurons that are destroyed when you're on TRT for very, very long. And that's why when you take the PCT away and that stimulation is not coming, the brain can't keep up with that signaling. So what I'm trying to say is keeping that signaling intact is probably a good idea on things like Clomid and, and Clomiphene, if you can. I'm not saying this is for everyone. I'm not saying everyone will be able to take Enclomiphene and feel perfectly fine because some guys legitimately need TIT, especially people with primary hypogonadism. But HPT access recovery can take many months or even years in the research. And sometimes TIT can be a blunt tool. Just replacing one hormone has a number of upstream effects on other hormones. So I think if you wanna go on TIT, and you are thinking of going on TRT, but your testicles are functioning and responding to LH and FSH, it may be an idea to trial enclomiphene, see how you go with high test levels, see how you respond, and enclomiphene monotherapy can actually work for not everyone, but for some people, and if you can keep your HPT axis non-suppressed, I think that would be a really awesome option. And really, I think for a certain subset of patients, enclomiphene is a bit more of a nuanced strategy as opposed to the blunt tool of just replacing testosterone, especially 
if the signaling is the issue and the testicles are actually functioning perfectly fine because then all you have to do is fix the signaling and the testicles will respond in kind. What do you guys think about enclomiphene? Have you tried it? And let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks so much for watching guys. I really love speaking about these topics. Um, yeah, I think getting all this information out there is really important. Fitness science, I'll see you in the next video.